for that eloquent leading in the written word of the Lord, Elder Gilbert. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. There is a proclaimed word from the Lord, and I'm so thankful for it. I'm pretty sure, excuse me, I, I, if, I didn't, if I'm not preaching this to anyone else, I'm preaching it to myself this morning. I want to address you from the topic, what sets us apart? I've read this story about the ten lepers many, many times before, and I used to think that this story was a lesson in gratefulness. Amen. I used to think that the primary lesson these lepers had to teach us was that it's important to praise God for what God does for you. And it is a lesson in gratefulness. It is a lesson in the importance of praising God for what God has done for you. I used to think that this encounter showed us how rarely people are truly and adequately thankful for what they get. Amen. And, and we're rarely that adequate, thankful for what we get. How many times do we wake up not thanking God for the gift of waking up? Because someone didn't this morning. This story has to teach us all of these things about the importance of thankfulness, about how rarely we're, we're thankful. But the Lord has something else to show us in this story, I believe. Notice how deliberate the writer is in pointing out that the one lover who came back to thank God was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. Why would that have been important? If you've been with me for a while now, you should be able to guess why, right? Let's see if y'all been paying attention by the, by the fervor with which you nod in agreement, amen. <laughs> the Samaritan is a person who allegedly does not know God the right way. The Samaritan is the foreigner, the one on the outside. The, the, the Samaritan was the one with the impure religious and ethnic heritage. The Samaritan was from what we call today the West Bank. That's where he was from. And they weren't entirely or sufficiently Jewish. That sounds horrible, doesn't it? They worshipped on the mountain instead of Jerusalem, the city of their common ancestor David. They were looked down upon. They were marginalized. The, to the Jews, all of them were lepers. They might as well have been, at least socially. To a good Jewish person, one who Jesus was, he didn't have anything to do with a Samaritan. They weren't of the right kind of stock. But the Samaritan leper was the one who came back to praise God for what Jesus had done for him. I don't know, but do you think that the other nine might have felt entitled? I don't know. What if the others felt like getting healed by Jesus was a no-brainer? You know, he's a Jew. We're Jews. Why wouldn't he help us? If you're a minority in this country, you might understand what the hookup is. Amen. Sometimes, if you are in a position to help somebody and you're of the same, you know, background, they're going to solicit a hookup from you. Come on, you know, we, we, we're Taiwanese. <laughs> help me out. Black folks, we have to say, you know, hook a brother up. Hook a sister up. People often bring up affinity when they want something from you, amen. And God help you if you refuse to help. Because you're a traitor to your people. You're turning your back on your culture, on your heritage. You're an ingrate. You're a sellout. You're too much, you're too Western. You're too much like the surrounding culture. If you all come from the same stock, your support is not just asked, it's expected. It's more or less expected, amen. Do you think that these former lepers might have felt that way? I don't know. I think they might have. I'm not sure. But I do know one thing, though. Jesus didn't heal them because they were Jews. If their shared heritage with Jesus was enough to elicit help from him, then the Samaritan would have had no part in that, amen. He would have had no chance. He would have remained a leper, but all ten of them cried out, and all ten of them were healed. 
the Jews, the one who the ones who supposedly knew the Lord and his power, they went on to complete the ritual showing to the priest. They had to show themselves clean to the priest uh, if you were cured of leprosy. The Samaritan, however, by contrast, who supposedly, at least, didn't know God like the Jews did, he still knew God well enough to praise God for what God had done. The nine others, the Jews, chose the letter of the law, but the Samaritan chose the spirit of it. Jesus told this man to get up and go on his way because his faith had made him well. The Greek word for made well, sozo, he used the word sozo. Another way to translate that would be your faith has saved you, has saved you. I believe that the gospel writer is using this encounter to communicate that it is not who you are that saves or makes you well. It has nothing to do with your heritage, your birthright, your affinity, your commonality with somebody, or any other means that you have to appeal to someone. You can't cajole salvation or wellness from God based on what you have going for you, amen? Heritage is not what these lepers had going for them. Perhaps that might be precisely why the Samaritan man came back and praised God while the others didn't. He knew that, at least to the Jews, he didn't come from the right kind of people. Being both a Samaritan and a leper, he didn't seemingly have anything going for him because God doesn't like Samaritans and he don't like lepers. Supposedly. Why would God have mercy on him? And because to him there seemed to be no reason why God would have mercy on him, a Samaritan leper, it magnifies the incredibility that God did have mercy on him. It made it just that more incredible. He knew, probably more than his Jewish brethren who were with him, how little he deserved it. And so he thanked God. But notice that Jesus never says, oh, you're welcome. Don't think anything of it. Jesus didn't take time to bask in his gratitude. He needed the Samaritan former leper to understand that it was his faith that made him well. He had the same thing going for him that the others did. Their faith. Whether he knew it or not. They all had the same thing going for them. I don't know what kind of outcast you might be. I don't know what reasons others have had for writing you off in the past. I don't know if anyone ever looked down on you because you didn't come from a certain family or because you didn't come from a socioeconomic location that was approved by society. I don't know if people have written you off because of the mountains of mistakes that you've made in your past or if that you continue to make. Amen. Amen. Mm. I don't know if anyone ever willingly ignored you because you weren't like them. But what I do know is that no matter who you are, no matter where we're from or how broken we may be in God's eyes, we have the same thing going for us that everybody else has. Amen. 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 If you have faith, the Greek word pistis, the conviction that God can and God will, despite how little we deserve it, that over everything else is what gets God's attention. Not who you are. You're special, but you ain't that special. Thank God that our Creator is not impressed by the same things we are. Amen. Thank God that He does not give deference to the upwardly mobile among us. Thank God that our peace is not contingent on our pedigree. Thank God that our stock has no power to save. Thank God for faith, simple, everyday, unassuming faith, and nothing more than faith. Thank God for a Job who could say, though he may slay me, yet will I trust him. Thank God for a little itty-bitty David who knew that he could 
take down a giant with a bunch of rocks, not because of his skill, but because God was with him. Thank God for a Jeremiah who, despite having been beaten, having been imprisoned, and attacked, abused for prophesying the word of God, he could still declare that nothing is too hard for God. Thank God for a little virgin, Mary, who, though she was a virgin, believed God when she was told that she would have a son. Thank God for faith. Simple, unassuming faith. Thank God for a faith that despite what it looks like and in defiance of every reason why it shouldn't work out, says, declares, insists that it will work out. Because God is capable of doing anything except failing. Thank God that faithfulness is God's nature. Faithfulness is who God is, and God cannot go back on his nature. He can't be unfaithful. What sets us apart is what is our willingness to say that, of course we don't deserve it, but have mercy on us anyway. Of course we haven't earned it, Lord, but please have mercy on us anyway, just because you are good, God. We don't have the right pedigree, we don't have the right skills, but you have it, God. You can do it, God. That's what gets God's attention. The supreme trust over our abilities, over our education, over our talents, over our connections, our background, our education, over the state of the economy and what others are willing to do for us, over whatever personal power we may be able to wield. God is moved when he, we trust him over all these things. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. That faith, that simple, unassuming, everyday faith that can take you places that nothing else you have can. That's what sets us apart. And that's what moves God to move for us. Amen. 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 Gracious and eternal God, we thank you that you are powerful. We thank you that you are capable. We, thankful, we are thankful that you are omnipotent. We are thankful that you are everything that we are not. So we don't have to be what you are. Lord, have mercy on us. No, we don't deserve it. No, we haven't earned it. But Lord, have mercy on us anyway. Have mercy on our bodies. Have mercy on our households. Have mercy on our vocations. Have mercy on our employment situations. Have mercy on our relationships. Have mercy on our minds. Have mercy on our spirits. Have mercy, Lord God. Because of who you are. Lord, you said that if we have faith, this is the size of a tiny mustard seed, we could command trees to be uprooted. We can command mountains to be moved. Lord, we feel sometimes that our faith really isn't much bigger than that little mustard seed. But Lord, you have assured us that that's all it takes. So Lord, we are declaring our trust in you. We are declaring our pistis, what the Greeks call pistis, our conviction in your power over everything else, over what it looks like over what our qualifiers are. Lord, we might be qualified, but it is you who justifies. So Lord, even now, have mercy. We trust that you will. We know that you will. And we give you praise in front of everybody because you are. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us